on Technique Tuesday. And of course, I'm working on baby stuff again because my daughter's baby's due in May and I'm so excited. I'm knitting all kinds of stuff for her. And I wanted to talk to today about a couple of things. One is by doing baby socks, you don't necessarily have to do baby socks for a baby. You can learn to knit socks using a baby sock pattern. So if you're interested in doing socks and want to learn the skill quickly, doing a smaller project like baby socks teaches you the concepts that you need to know in sock knitting and it's done much more quickly. So I wanted to talk about a couple different things today. First of all, I want to get some housekeeping things out of the way. And we have this lovely Dos Tieros yarn. You see how lovely it is? It's 50% alpaca and 50% wool, merino wool. And this is gonna be a knit along. And this is from Malabrigo. Lovely, lovely yarn. And I wanted to show you the example that I recently did. This is called the Adventurer Cow by Amba O'Brien. And I used uh, some tensing that I had at home, which is by Juniper Moon, which is no longer being made right now. And then the Dos Tiros is a brightly colored one here. And so for those of you who like doing chevrons, this is an A-line chevron, so it means it's done at a slant. And it's really fun to knit this project. And we do have it on the pattern on Alpaca Direct for sale if you're interested in that. But this Dos Tiros is wonderful yarn. It's great for all different kinds of projects. I've made uh, slippers out of it and all, all, whatever you need. It has merino in it, so it's nice and soft and um, super warm because of the alpaca. And when does it start? Um, March 1st, right? April 1st. Remember, oh, they moved right, it out. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. April 1st. <laughs> yes. And it's by Hohi Locatelli. And she has the shawl on Ravelry. You can see it there. And we also have a link to it on our website, Jim. Yeah. Okay. So there's a link on our website for that. And Heidi's helping out. So she's going to post a link to the blog, Cal. Yes. The thank cow. you, Heidi. Um, Kathleen can't be here today. And so Heidi is taking over. And I'm so appreciative to have her. So thank you, Heidi, for helping us out here today. And um, so that cow is going to, going to be... K-E-L stands for knit along, for those of you who don't know what that means. And um, it's gonna be a shawl. And the designer, Hohi Locatelli, is a wonderful designer. She's, it's a pleasure to knit her pattern. So for those of you that are looking for a new project, a shawl might be just the thing for you. And I love these colorways, this uh, kind of like pottery uh, barn colorway. I don't know, it's very, very pretty. They did an excellent job choosing the colors, I love it. So I'm very excited about that, and we'll have that. Do we have it on sale right now on our website? It's not on sale, but it's it's available, yeah. It's for sale. Yeah, it's for sale. <laughs> right, it's on, for sale, not on sale. Okay, good to know. So as I'm going along, I, I'm talking about this little booty pattern here. Isn't that cute? And some things I want to mention to you. This right here is called a gusset. And we're going to, that uh, pattern has a nice little gusset that's super easy to do. And then it has a really slip stitch heel that makes it for um, extra squishy and thick. And it helps your sock last longer. And I do mine out of alpaca. I want to spend one moment and talk to you about why I love alpaca. Alpaca is one of the warmest fibers in the world. It's also extremely soft. So why wouldn't you want that for your baby? And literally, if you need to wash this, you just put it in the sink with a couple drops of your baby wash that you use to wash your baby and just let it sit there a minute. And then just give it a swish, wring it out, lay it on the counter, and you're done. It's that easy. All you have to remember to do is when you do these booties, do not throw them in the hamper because you might forget and throw them in the wash machine. So just don't throw them in the hamper. Throw them in the bathroom where you're going to give the baby a bath and take two seconds to wash them. So what I did, I made this extra long. Can, do you see how they can be kind of knee um, all the way up to their knees? So it'll make them super um, warm. And it's totally cool. I did one size needle for the first two and a half inches. Then I um, went ahead and knitted the rest of the way up with the needle that was larger. And then I did this wonderful Icelandic bind off that is super nice and stretchy and you can see how nice it looks on the edge. And I just love the, um, the that bind off. It's wonderful. Yeah. 
And that's going to be available later this week, right? Yeah. This well, pattern? Actually, yeah. Uh -huh. What's Th that? This pattern will be available later this week? Um, yes, it's going to be later on this week. I'm doing it right now. Also, I wanted to talk to you guys about a couple yarns. If you're not familiar with Encore, this is like a workhorse yarn. It has a ton of yarn yardage. It has a small amount of wool, but it is machine washable. So for those of you that must have machine washable yarns, I love these dots. I wanted to show you these dots. They're, they can make the cutest little baby projects and they're machine washable. So do you see that, Jim? Can you show them how mm -hmm. cute that is? Mm -hmm. and I've done all kinds of different projects with it. Matter of fact, I think that I used it on this project, which was a crochet project. Um, another thing I thought was worth mentioning, for those of you that like baby alpaca, there is only one brand of worsted weight yarn that I found anywhere that has a pure white. That's by Cascade Yarn. So if you're looking for a pure white because you want it as a background color, I mean, or, you know, for the baby's projects to be pure white, then here it is. We have it for sale in Cascade and it's 100% baby alpaca made in Peru. It's a great yarn. It's every bit um, a beautiful quality yarn. And the other ones I wanted to show you, which we had talked about before, was our new yarn, which is called Bravo and then Bravo Petites. And I'm sure you've seen that before. And that is a baby alpaca yarn that I am totally enjoying right hey, now. Hey Kelly, now that one is, the one, the Bravo is natural, right? So there's no dyes? Yes, and, and the, um, yes. That's right, the, um, the, the natural color has absolutely no dye in it, so it's totally wonderful. Also, if you must have a machine washable yarn, now uh, they call it a super wash yarn, but and this project up here I, I have dried in the dryer, but I also find that for my delegates, <laughs> I don't like to dry them a whole lot because I spent so much time knitting it, I don't wanna damage the fibers too much with heat. So I'll dry them a bit and then just lay them out on top of the dryer, much like we do with our alpaca socks. When we wash them in the wash machine, we rescue them from the dryer and put them on the top of the dryer. And by the time we're ready to wear them, voila, they're dry. Um, I also wanted to mention this lovely Sueno yarn that I have here. And this is a bamboo merino blend. And I love this yarn because it has a great twist on it. And it is perfect for baby stuff. So if you're making baby blankets and you want them to last, the colorways are beautiful. And you can see that these neutral colorways go very nicely with baby colors. Looks like you've been on a shopping spree for our grandbaby. <laughs> well, my sister, I have a twin sister, Shelly, and she and I have been shopping. I wanted to tell you, if you go to Macy's and you go, well, we went in uh, California because that's where my sister lives. Um, but we found like this newborn baby jacket and it has a hood on it. And I love this color. It's the very popular color, similar to this one. And um, it has a hood. And look at this from Macy's. It was $6.53. So you guys, if you shop in the back of the store where the sale racks are, you can get some really cute stuff at Macy's and Kohl's too. Um, you know, Use those coupons online and um, you, shop where the discount racks are. This was one that I found at um, TJ Maxx and I love this little um, PJ set because I love zippers. They're so much easier than um, using buttons or so. And then I wanted to show you a couple of other things. So when we're doing our um, knitting, what I'm doing is I am taking the clothes and making stuff to match it. So it all kind of goes together. So um, that's what I'm thinking when I'm um, doing my projects. And I think I'll probably do a little hat out of this um, Royal um, Alpaca by Blue Sky Alpacas. I think this is a discontinued yarn, right? Yep. And, um, but it's a lovely um, Royal Alpaca yarn. And so I'll do a few things. Now, most of the things that I knit for the kids, I'd like it to be machine washable, but I do like doing some very special stuff. A few things that are, they have to take care of and they don't mind. Um, taking care of it. Um, they're really good about it because they're kind of like me. They love alpaca. So as we're going along, Jim, what our price for last year, uh, last week was our Kabasi Plus, right? Mm -hmm. 
and uh, they had chosen the deep turquoise colorway. Yeah. And for some reason, I don't have the, let me just spend one second. I'm gonna go grab some Bravo because we want Bravo for a, a prize for this week. And I am gonna be right back. I'm just gonna it's grab right there. some Bravo. Isn't it there? No, it, oh. it's right around here. So I'm gonna grab some and I think I'll grab These are pretty. All right. So this one is called Honey, Golden Honey. And this is our new yarn from Alpaca Direct. And it is direct from Peru, one of the best factories in Peru. And it's 100% baby alpaca. So you get to choose between the Bravo Golden Honey or the next colorway that we're gonna look at is Sapphire. And I love this deep, intense color here. It's 100% baby alpaca, I love it. If you haven't knit with um, alpaca before, you should try it. <laughs> it so is gold or a blue. treat, <laughs> it's a treat. I love it so much. And um, so anyway, so let's take a look. I'm gonna, oh, this pattern is the Claire's Baby Boot Socks, if you look right here. And it's gonna be posted on Friday, right Jim? Mm -hmm. I'm just finishing up testing that heel to make sure it's totally perfect. But I wanted to spend one second here. Oh, you guys, I wanted to make sure and tell you one thing also about the voting. I didn't finish talking about this. So in order to win, you have to put comments in the comment section. Maybe you tell us what you're working on, where you're from, what you're, you know, anything that you like, or maybe you have questions about something. This is a great time to ask because you know what? I'm sitting right here for you. So that is great. And don't forget to share with your friends and push that like button, right, Jim? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so um, let's take a look at our skills. I wanted to, I love doing all socks and things two at a time. So I'm going to bring this around here, and I want to look over this with you. So what are you going to show them here? At, we're going to look at German short rows. We're going to look at the this lovely little bind off here. And um, I wanted to show them the part of the baby sock heel. So on here, I, ne I need to grab the pattern, Jim. So this, see this section right there? That's the gusset. And guess what? This right here that I have on my needles is one gusset. And this is another gusset right here. And I'm just increasing on either side. And what you do is you double your stitch count to make that gusset. So if I have 12 stitches on this side, then I wanna have 24 stitches. And these little markers, what I did with my markers is I put these markers here so that I knew that I'm only going to be increasing on one side of the socks. So if you look on the back of here, you'll see a little blue marker. That marks the beginning of my round because when you're first doing the magic loop method and you're just learning, you can get very confused whether or not you've done a whole round or not. So right here tells me, uh-huh, when I knit all the way around here, then I know that I have completed one complete round. So that's what that does there. So using stitch markers can be very helpful. So in my pattern, let's look at our pattern here. All right, where's the pattern part? I'll just do, so I have this heel gusset section here and it talks about needle one and needle two. Needle one being the beginning well, here, let, let's finish with our heel gusset. On here, it says knit across your needle one. So I've done all the way across here because this was the beginning of my row. So I knit all the way across there so I didn't have to have you watching me do that on camera. And then what I did is on, on the second half of the needles, I'm gonna be doing my increases. And all I do is I knit front. Oh, let's stop one second. How do I know where I'm at? Look for your working yarn and see where it's coming off that stitch. I know that I need to knit right here because my working yarn's right there and that's where my stitch was the last stitch that I knit. So that's how I know where I'm at in this process. So if you're just learning, that's very confusing. Now I'm gonna do, be doing a knit 
front and back. Now this knit front and back looks a little bit loose, right? So snug it up a little bit so that your socks don't look funky on the edges. A lot of new sock knitters don't snug that up right there. And what I mean is I'm snugging it up to this red cord, but I'm not trying to kill that stitch back there. Leave a little fabric left over on that stitch because um, you don't want to pull it too tight and have that, that'll make it look funny too. So you kind of can't win for losing, but you want to snug it up a little, but don't snug it up too much, okay? So a little goes a long way, they say. And then I'm going ahead and I'm knitting across the front here. And then when I get to this other side, two stitches before, I'm gonna go ahead and go, I'm gonna go knit front and back. Mm -hmm. And then knit one. Now when you're done doing your decreases, or excuse me, increases on your edges, Always stop and just take one minute and say, do I have a pearl bump? See, there's a pearl bump right there. And I know that's a pearl bump because it won't disappear when I tug on the stitches. And right here, I have a pearl bump. So I've done both increases. So check that as you go because brand new knitters or ones that are new to sock knitting will often do an increase on one side but not on the other side. And so um, that can then you have to go backwards and brand new knitters have a harder time going backwards because they're unfamiliar with um they're you know they're just learning so see how i snugged that up just a little bit but i didn't kill that back stitch there and then you would just knit across so then this was my as soon as i finish here this will be my last set of gusset increases so then i'm going to be doing just a few short rows and I'll just show you a couple one on the knit side and one on the purl side because it's way too long to turn the whole heel while we're working this morning since we only have very few minutes so this last one we're going to be doing a knit front and back and then we're going to be doing that one okay Alright, then on the back here, we um, are, we go ahead and we knit across the round. That is round number nine in our pattern. So we would, oh, one second here. Repeat rounds eight and nine five more times. So we have just finished, um, then we're going, oh, it just says, what you do is when you do the increases, I'm sorry, I'm getting myself confused, is between each increase you have to do a knit round and so it's having you do that last knit round and then we're going to be doing the short rows and I will untangle my yarns here and knit across and I don't know if you've ever seen German short rows before but it's totally awesome And um, when you do, one second here. So I have that. I just have to knit across my, actually I'm gonna pretend as if I already did knit across the back because I can always go back and fix this. I am well. So when we're doing the sock heels, remember you're going to be doing one heel at a time. So I'll do the heel on this one and then I'll do the heel on this one. You don't have to take them off the needles, you just do them one at a time because you'll be knitting flat. Instead of you'll be going back and forth doing a few short rows and then you're gonna be um, decreasing these extra stitches that you had put on there for your gusset. So on this first one, it tells you to knit to the last six stitches and turn your work. So I'll knit all the way across here until I have six stitches left. Now if you're familiar with the wrap and turns, what's lovely about the German short rows and different about the German short rows is there are no wraps to pick up and if you see how I actually do the short row, it's super easy. Three, six. So I have six stitches left on my needles. Now it says 
turn your work and do a short German short row. When you do a German short row, you just slip the stitch needle tip to needle tip and always have the yarn in front, whether it's a knit or a purl. Do you see that V that comes up over the top of your needle? You pull that tight and I'm holding it with my right hand finger here to keep it tight. And then I'm gonna purl until there are six more stitches. So I have that on there. Okay. And then I'll show you what you do on the purl side. It's the same thing, or on the knit side. It's the same thing as when you do it on the purl side. So three and six. So I have one more stitch. Now I'm gonna turn. Voila, working yarn in front. I know this seems like weird and counterintuitive, but keep that working yarn in front, and then you will see the stitch come up and over the top like that. And then you begin knitting again. And then you knit until there's one stitch before your last German short row. And then you do this back and forth until you have a couple German short rows on each side, and then you proceed to do the next part, which is just slip slip knit and purl two together. So I had the, this is your German short row. You can see it. See how the yarn is twisted over the top like that? So I did, I knit until one stitch before and then I'm going to go ahead and slip it up over the top and make that V. So when you're doing German short rows, remember all you need to do is slip the stitch that you want to make the German short row on, needle tip to needle tip, with your working yarn in front. There's nothing else to remember. And you don't, you don't have, there's not one uh, method for the knit side and one method for the purl side. They're exactly the same. Pass the stitch, needle tip to needle tip with the working yarn in front. And this, my dear, is how you do short rows. And see right here, if you pull your stitches apart, you could see those Vs. It's so easy to see your German short rows. So if you have been afraid to knit socks, try and do the baby sock because I think you will love it. Now I'm gonna show you the bind off that I did on this pattern. See how beautiful that looks? And it's nice and stretchy. It's pretty darn nice. I like it. So let me show you how I did it. So I would start by knitting a stitch and then slip that stitch back on the left hand needle. Take your right hand needle and go underneath the stitch next to it and come up and knit it. What are you showing here? This is the Icelandic bind off and it works good on garter stitch it works good on all kinds of stuff and it's just that same thing you're doing over and over work the stitch move it over work it Oop, but don't grab a strand of yarn so let me show you one more time I'm gonna tell you what I'm doing slip that stitch back to the left hand needle take your right hand needle and go under the next stitch next to it and you can keep everything loose so you're not struggling and then you knit the next stitch and then you can tighten it up to whatever um, tightness you want. But see how cool it looks? I think it's a beautiful bind off. It looks really nice um, on with all kinds of stuff. So if you need a new bind off or you want to learn a new bind off, that Icelandic bind off is super, super cool. And also learning to use the magic loop method for two at a time as I have done here with these socks. See? Two at a time. So when I'm done, they're exactly alike. It's super easy to do. And if you make a mistake or you knit tight on one sock, guess what? It's tight on the other sock too. <laughs> Fantastic! Plus, I'm not sitting there trying to count all these rows to make sure that my sock, one sock looks exactly the same as another sock. And that is fantastic too. So let me see who the winner is for today's yarn. And that is this Kabasi Plus. And it, this Kabasi Plus, if you haven't used it before, it has a super nice tight twist to it. Kind of matches your shirt. Yeah, and I know I love the colorway. And it's 55% cotton, 16% bamboo, 21% elastic, and 8% silk. And um, it is a super nice yarn. I like to use it for blankets. Um, anything uh, summertime stuff. 
I, I just really like this Kabasi Plus. And if you've ever used the regular Kabasi, this Kabasi um, is a little different. It knits up a little different. It doesn't, sometimes it can be a little bit splitty. I don't know if you've used it before. Although I do love it. I love it. This is not that way. So if you have tried the other, um, this one is different. It's worth trying. It's totally cool. Hey, Kel, uh -huh. before you say the winner, I have a question for audience. Sure, of course. I want to know, because I'm a single tasker, and so I sit there and watch you. You're knitting, uh -huh. you're reading the pattern, Yes. you're doing the math, and you're talking and telling people at the same time. So that doesn't, I don't know how you do that. So I'm, I'm going to ask if it's normal or if that's kind of a knitting superpower. <laughs> so. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a knitting superpower, but anyhow, it's pretty amazing for me to watch. Yeah, huh. Well, I kind of just do that. I don't really think about it. Um, I Maybe the reason why I can do that, and this might be one of the reasons why I do that, is because I have committed a lot of the skills to memory. I don't have to look it up because I followed that 3-2-1 rule, you know, no more than three, two, um, three skills at a time that are new, and that we try to um, make sure that we have two projects or what, um, oh, I know what it is. No, 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 I got that mixed up. Okay, so no more than two new skills and we're gonna practice one hour a day and then three projects using the same skill at a time so that you can learn it from memory. And that's what I do a lot. I do a ton of skills that do the same thing. Matter of fact, this stitch I've been using, I did a pair of booties with it. Um, I did a hat for Claire with it. And now I'm doing leg warmers for my sister with it. And I, it's not a new skill for me, but you'll see how I do that often. I'll do, you know, I get excited about something and I'll do it over and over. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and that's why I'm sharing the pattern with you because I was excited about that and I thought you might be too. Christina it's says it's a girl thing. <laughs> it's a girl thing. Yes, we can talk and work at the same that time. <laughs> totally awesome. Okay, so now let me not forget who the winner is for today. All right, I know, Jim, that you've written it. Oh, okay. I know I can pronounce Diane and then Roca Bruna. Roca Bruna. Diane, I'm sorry if I crucified your name. Don't take it personal. I crucified a lot of people's names. Anyway, Diane, you won. You won this Kabasi Plus. Now you can make something with it too. So Diane, all you need to do is contact us at customerservice at alpacadirect.com and give us your address and we can get your lovely yarn out in the mail to you. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. And don't forget you guys, for those of you who are wanting to win something for next week, uh, you should try to let us know which colors in Bravo Alpaca you like, the gold color or sapphire. And then don't forget to tell us what you're working on and share with your buddies. And maybe you can post stuff that you're working on too. I love what, looking at your guys' pictures and stuff of what you're working on because there are so many talented knitters out there. And I like learning from you too and getting ideas. Oh yes true. We do have a VIP Facebook group. Jim's um, uh, giving me the little postcard telling me about the VIP group. Don't forget to mention that. And what it is, is it's a group of wonderful knitters and crocheters that help each other out. And it's free. And how do they find it, Jim? They just go to Facebook and go to the group. Yeah, you go to Facebook and you type in a pocket Direct, right? Yep. Yes. And then you can be part of the VIP group. And if you're learning to knit, it's sort of having a, it's sort of like having a virtual knitting table, which is kind of cool right now, since they're recommending that we don't go out in public that much because of the coronavirus. Um, yes, so it's having a virtual table gives you an opportunity to interact with others without getting coronavirus. <laughs> Ta-da! Awesome. <laughs> So for all of you out there, next week we are going to be working on yet another pattern. And it's going to be, I believe, it's a leg warmer pattern. The one that I am doing for my sister. And our, yes, I see you, Jim. Um, so Jim's telling me, make sure you summarize what you're talking about. Okay. So the short of the whole thing is doing socks two at a time in the round is absolutely the way to go. And if you're afraid of socks, 
start with the baby sock pattern. It might be just big enough and you can use scrap yarn. Don't take out your best scrap, your breast yarn for your uh, first pair of socks because let me tell you, it takes a little practice to get them to actually fit you and work well. So working on a baby sock pattern is an ideal way to learn. And then don't forget to try that Icelandic bind off because oh my gosh, I love that bind off. It doesn't have the regular knit stitches. It goes great with garter stitch and ribbing like I used in mine. And then I know there are a lot of people out there that don't use stitch markers and they find them tedious and they, um, they don't like them too much. I know there's a lot of students that don't like them a whole lot, right? So I would venture to say become friends with your stitch markers because that's the way that I am able to do projects every single week. Right, Jim? Mm -hmm. Because what happens if you go backwards? Is it faster or slower to go backwards? <laughs> Jim, tell me. Is it faster to go slower? When you're going backwards, is it faster or slower to undo what you've done rather than knit it right the first oh, time? Oh, yeah. It's a lot slower. It's a lot slower. So, um, Try and become friends with stitch markers. And if you haven't seen our stitch markers that we have at Alpaca Direct, check them out. We have some really cool ones. I searched high and low everywhere looking for the best stitch markers. So if you haven't used our rainbow stitch markers, I love those little, they're magnetic. And you know what, I, I don't know if you saw the um, one uh, Technique Tuesday where I talked about it before, but our stitch markers are magnetic. So I can work on the, my computer looking at patterns and stuff and I'll take a few stitch markers and just put it, throw it toward the computer and it goes ding and sticks right to it. <laughs> that way I have some stitch markers handy when I need them. <laughs> it's a pretty cool thing. Anyway, all right. So for next week, we're gonna be talking about another pattern that I'll be releasing and um, probably quite a few other things too. So I hope you guys have a great week. Stay safe and have fun knitting indoors while we're trying not to go out in the public so much. You take care and I'll see you next Tuesday.